do you not have any clothes on? Yes, I do. I mean, like, are you not freezing? I've grown up in Texas all my life. I don't know if I'm just getting older and the cold is like, like, it's, or it's just colder in Texas. I think it's a little bit colder in Texas. Chip, come! Oh my goodness. I just realized that these girls go to the processor in like one week. I can't believe that we've signed on for this many projects. It's fun, it's very exciting. Oh boy, okay. Wow, one week, all right. Okay, it's Sunday, tomorrow is whenever the cow and calf come. I wanna show you the pen that we built. This is just kind of like a temporary holding pen so that they can sleep in here. And really the main thing is to get them in here an enclosed, safe location that they can get used to this property just so that they're nice and safe until they get used to us. So it's really nothing fancy. It is 16 by 16, one full cattle panel all the way around. Uh, it is a little oblong just a tad because I really didn't care that much and I needed to add the gate. And so I figured, hey, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be perfectly square. I'm just gonna go ahead and add the gate here. And then this front side is gonna be a little bit wider. Because of cattle panels and all steel being so expensive right now, I did not wanna cut a cattle panel because this is gonna be a temporary holding pin eventually we might we've been really thinking this might be a great place for a barn it really is fitting uh what we would want for like a a smaller three-sided lean-to type barn maybe not a full scale final barn but i think this could be a really cool location for a stable not really a stable. what do you call it if you put cows in there do you call it a stable or is that only for horses we'll come in here and the cows will come in here. And then what we have is another gate right here. And this is where we will put the calf. So then we'll be able to separate the cow and calf and then the calf will go in there. And then we can lock it up so that the cow and calf are close to each other, but they are separated at night so that we can get that fresh milk in the morning. Okay, a couple more things to note. I'm just gonna chop these boards off. I put these boards here so that, because the end of this cattle panel was a little bit sharp and I just knew that there was gonna get a lot of traffic in and out. So I didn't want them rubbing up against that sharp panel here. So this is just some boards to, to brace that to where we can easily lock this and they don't get scraped. And then uh, I use this tree so that if they put any pressure, I. I got too small of T-posts, unfortunately. That was kind of dumb. Uh, I don't know why I was thinking that I needed five and a half feet. It was just stupid. I think I'm used to buying the five and a half foot for the hog panels, which are a lot shorter. So it was a dumb move there. Uh, I have a lot of six and a half and seven footers that I can switch out if I needed to, but I want to talk about these two gates. So we bought these two gates uh, probably like six months ago. And the deal with these gates, I feel like I'm being conceited, but also I'm very proud of myself. I bought a whole bunch of cattle panels, T-posts, to where I wouldn't have to spend a whole lot of money, and I knew that this was happening. So I bought a lot of this stuff last, like earlier this year, 
whenever the next stimulus package came out, y'all, these gates are now $129. So they have gone up $20 per gate since I bought them. I just cannot believe how expensive everything is getting. So if there's something that you're thinking that you might need in the future, get it, buy it. Is inflation gonna go up more or less? I don't wanna get political here, but I'm just, it is a big deal, the fact that whenever I looked at the price of these gates that I bought them for $109.99 and now they're $129.99. So that is a 18% increase in the price. 18% increase in the price of this. My dog food has gone up 7%. I can't believe that this has gone up 18%. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you the full process of what I did in order to build this pen. First thing I did was I used my awesome tractor to clear most of the land all around the bigger trees. I use my shredder brush hog to do the bulk of the work. But once you get through most of the stuff, you realize that there are some bigger, like three, four inch trees that really the, the shredder can't handle that. So you have to go through and do it with loppers and chainsaws. But what I love so much is that this was my biggest project on being able to clear land and turn it all into mulch. We hired that forestry mulcher uh, last year, but now I know that I can do it with my tractor. Well, all you have to do is just take all the brush, make sure that there's no giant trees in it, and what you do is just lay it in a line, and then you take the brush hog and you go backwards with it. So you want to kind of go back and forth and back and forth, and every time I go forward, I have to lift up the brush hog back on the back end of my tractor. Otherwise, it'll start dragging and cutting into the dirt. But if I do it this way, if I push it down whenever I go backwards and then lift it up when I go forward, I am able to create a, an amazing final product. It looks like a park. It looks almost as good as hiring the forestry mulcher for $1,500 a day. Then once we had all the land cleared, Really, I can't believe how much it looks different. Like, this is so awesome. Kelly is loving having this open space. We're probably gonna do it for a lot more parts of the property while also keeping our privacy as well. But so what I did is I first just barely lined up and just leaned up these cattle panels to where I could get a rough idea of how we want it to look. And then what we used is we used the first gate as kind of like what we call the corner post to where we have everything come off of that first gate. We knew that we wanted it in a certain location to where it looks good compared to our house and the rest of the property. And then we dug that hole. I did not put this post in concrete because again, this is a temporary holding pin. I, we're liking it so much that we're probably gonna put a barn here at some point. So I really didn't wanna have to deal with the concrete and I can be able to compact it more and just pull it and push it and re-level it with the tractor if I ever needed to. So I'm not too worried about that. Here you can see where I really struggled with being able to put these T-posts in because I was dumb and I bought them a foot too small. So my T-post driver wouldn't work because it kept on hitting the cattle panels. So I had to use a sledgehammer, but I was able to get it all done. And then here's the final product. All right, y'all, the cow comes tomorrow. And if you wanna see our playlist of how we built this property from raw land all the way from scratch, please check out the link here.